morning, Kal Kadosh. We're going to read some of the Pesukim from Chok Yisrael. Some beautiful, beautiful things that we'll see. A beautiful message from the parasha. Avam Avinu is the Ken Baba Amin, v'Hashem Be'ach et Avam Bakol. That's where we ended off yesterday. The next Pesuk in the Torah, Vayomer Avaham el Avdo, Zekan Beto. Avaham says to his servant, Eliezer, Zekan Beto. The elderly of his home, we have to see what that means. Hamoshel Bechol Asherlo. He's literally in charge of everything that belongs to Avraham Avinu. Place your hand pri- uh, underneath my thigh. So let's just explain what's going on here before we see the Pesukim. Avraham Avinu literally almost slaughtered his son. And he realized that it's time for a Shiduch. So he's getting a little bit worried. He's also getting old. And going, he's getting old, the Pesuk just said. So he said, it's time to find a great Shiduch for my son. For Yitzhak. What does he do? He sends Eliezer Eved Avraham. And prior to this mission of finding a Shiduch, one of the Imahot, literally the second of the Imahot, it's a very incredible mission he has. A great task. He it tells him, he makes him swear that he will take a person from the family of Avraham specifically and not take anybody from Canaan. So what is this whole scene? What is Avraham? Look at, we're going to see the Psukim now. And why does the Torah have to introduce Eliezer with such great titles? Zekan Beto. You know what that means? What's Zekan Beto? Meaning that he's been in this house for years. He knows exactly how the house of Avraham Vinu looks. What goes on there? It's not a house that they play blackjack and poker. That's not what they're doing at night. Mm-hmm. What are they doing? Avodat Hashem. All day, every day. Avraham Megeret Agirim, Sarah is converting the ladies. Do, it's a house of Zikui Rabim. That's all they do. They care about spreading the word of God in the nation, in, amongst all people of the world. That's what Avraham Vinu is about. So Zikan Beto means he's here. He's very wise. He knows exactly what the house of Avraham Vinu is all about. Hamoshel Bechol Asher He is literally his Aputropius. Meaning, he is in charge of all of the money in the house of Avraham Vinu. He has the codes to all the secret bank accounts of Avraham Avinu. He has his Chase, his Wells Fargo accounts, everything down packed, all of his pins, his Visa, MasterCards, debit cards, everything is in his hands. Moshel Bechol Asher So why do I need to know this? What, why is the Torah coming and giving us this introduction prior to letting us know? Moshe, come sit here. We need a chair. Did you bring a chair right here? There's a few chairs. Why is the Torah giving us this introduction about Eliezer Eved Avraham? And very interesting way, he's making him swear. What, you don't trust him? You just said such great praises. So trust the guy. You just said he lived in your house for a long time. He's wise. He's amazing. He's saying, listen, you're going to have to swear. Next, look at Pasuk Gimel, next Pasuk. Sorry, you guys don't all have books. I apologize. We're going to get you guys books. <laughs> I'm going to make you swear. Make you say an oath. In the name of God, the God of the heavens, the God of the land. Be careful. Do not take a woman. I don't want a shiduch from the daughters of Canaan. I know I sit amongst them, but I don't want that. I want you to go to my land. I want you to go to my birthplace. Only there you should go and find a shiduch. And from there, you, t- you should take a son, a, a wife for my son Yitzhak. Pasuk, hey. What happens if she doesn't want to come to me? Maybe she won't want to come. She won't want to come after me. Shall I bring your son back or not? What do I do? And what did he say? The next Pasukim we'll see tomorrow. He tells him, if you don't find them, then don't worry about my shavua. You are in a key. But don't bring anybody. Just come back. I don't want another wife. It's not from my home. If it's not someone who is not from Blood Kenan, go home. Forget about the shiduch. It's called off. Nothing. Come home. Didn't Eliezer have a daughter? Yes, sir. Beautiful. That's where we're heading right now. Excellent. So the pasuk says, Ulai. If you look in pasuk Dalet, sorry, pasuk Hey. Maybe she won't want to come. So when Eliezer finally finds Rivka, 
He gets to the well, he finds her, and he then comes to the house of Betuel and Lavan. And then he's telling over the whole story. And he's going over what Avam Avinu told Eliezer. And then he says also, Ulay lo tavo, maybe she won't come. He tried to prove to them how much it was important to find someone specifically from his home. And how, what, Hashgacha Patit, the divine province of God, that literally I found you guys. I found you, I found Rivka, the son of Betuel uh, uh, and the, the brother of Lavan. So it's perfect. So therefore he also said there, Ulay. But if you look at the word Ulay, here it's written Aleph, Vav, Lamed, Yud. Ulay. There, how does the Torah write Ulay? Anybody know? Yaakov, you know? <coughs> Aleph, Lamed, Yud. It says Ulay, but it's missing a Vav. Why? How do you read that word? We read it, Ulay. But how, do you, how is the text written? Elai. Elai. So, what does it mean, Elai? Elai Tavo. What does that mean, Elai? To me, she should come. What does that mean? Chazal teaches, Rashi writes on the spot, that he said, maybe I have a daughter, and why don't we just make a match, perfect match. Yeah. You know me, you know my, sometimes the best shidduchim are family friends. Right here, this guy literally lives in his house. He's perfect. The Torah gives the greatest praises in the world. And what happens? He says, maybe, listen, let's just save this whole journey. Why should I go out of the city and look for a shidduch? Give me your son for my daughter. Match made in heaven. No good, Moshe. What do you think? It's a good shidduch? It's better. Why all the headaches? Go and meet the families. You know the family perfect. But what does Hashem, what does Avon Avinu tell Eliezer? Why did he deny it? So much so that he didn't even trust it. And he loves him. But when push comes to shove, he says, listen, I love you very much. But now, you're on a mission, it's a mitzvah, you're about to find one of the matriarchs, I want you to do this job well. And I don't want your daughter. I want someone from the family. Why? So Rashi writes, he told him, who is he making Eliezer swear not to take? Mi benot Kenan. What family did Eliezer come from? Must be Kenan. He is Kenani. Very good. He's an Evid Kenani. Exactly. He was from Kenan. So what did Avraham Vinu tell him? Listen, my Zera is, is Baruch. I am Avraham. We are Baruch. We're Zera. We're blessed. Every Jew is blessed. Regardless of who they are, what their actions are, they come from a lineage of greatness. The chain of Kedusha, of the Avot Kedushim, of our holy patriarchs. You are Aru, Eliezer. You come from Kenan. It's a tough statement to say. And he tells him, you're Aru, my friend, I'm sorry, Shidduch is called off, go find a good Shidduch, and I don't trust you, I want to make you swear. What does he say? Tachad Yerechi. Tachad Yerechi, what does that mean? Beneath my thigh. So I'll tell you two shots. The famous one is Rashi, I'll leave that second. The Ebn Ezra writes, what does it mean? Simna Yadecha Tachad Yerechi. Please place your hand underneath my thigh. So he says your hand is also today, nowadays, the Ebn Ezra writes that till this day, he writes this many years ago, that people still make oaths like this. They take their right hand and they put it on something important and they make a vow. So he says, but they used to place it underneath the thigh. Why? It's to show that my hand, which is my ability to do kochi ve'otzim yadi, to do whatever I want, place it under my thigh and I'm sitting on it. Meaning, your hand is disabled, it's mine. You are my slave. That's what Evan says. He says it's a pact that shows like, you, your hands, which shows your ability to do whatever you want, my koach, is nothing, it belongs to me. My thigh will sit on it, literally. You can't do anything. You're literally chained to me. So that's why he did such a pact. According to Ibn Ezra, that's the pshat. But comes Rashi and says, no. Simnana yadecha tachat means hold on to my brit milah. That's Interesting. What that's what, it, that's what Rashi writes. That's the pshat Rashi writes. Beautiful. Which pshat of Torah is Rashi HaKadosh. So that is what Chazal teaches and Rashi writes. Now, obviously we are not it's, we're all bothered, but what does that mean he's touching his bleat? Like, we are all perverted and we see bad things from this. We have to understand these are very holy people and this is a very holy thing. And Rashi writes that it was the first mitzvah of Amaviru did and it was very, very dear to him. But I thought this morning a beautiful pshah, and listen to this. I, I think it's a beautiful pshah, I didn't see this anywhere, but I think it's a beautiful pshah. So I'm, I'm revealing it for the first time. Tell me if you guys like it. It's a hidush, it's biskut. It's actually Bishkut Moshe. Moshe Levi and his Mary were learning Hokkei Yisrael now. 
And also, Aaron, Baruch Hashem. So two people at once asked to learn Chok. Moshe and Aaron. Baruch Hashem. Aaron. Veshmua v'koh Shemo. So, Moshe and Aaron v'koh Anav. I'm the Quran. Wow. So, so it says, listen to this Hiddush. Why specifically the Brit? So we just said, why was Eliezer denied access to become, have a Shiduch with his daughter in Avraham Avinu? Because of what? Because of Canaan. Anyone remember what happened with Canaan? What did Canaan do? Canaan, no. What did Canaan do? Hazaku Baruch. And Pasha Ham. Beautiful. Very good. But then the Pasha Noach, when Noach gets out of the Teva, he got a little drunk. He drank a little bit of wine. And what happens? He gets out of the Teva. He has a nice bottle of wine. Baruch Hashem. Vayachel Noach. Rashi writes, Asa atzma hulin. He became mundane. He, he drank a little bit. And what did he do? He got drunk in the cave. And what happened? Cham came, and there's a machloket between our Rishonim, the Tanaim actually, what sin he did. But there's one of two sins. One is that he castrated, castrated him. <laughs> one is that he castrated his father. He cast him another opinion, or oh, you told me another Hiddush. Chazak Moshe, you're going to tell it to us after. Oh, beautiful, Kim. He's going to tell us a nice Hiddush, actually. He told me. In the name of Tzion Levi, right? So, in one second, you're going to tell us it. A second Pigus that the Gemara says, is that what did he do? He, was, he had a relationship with his father. But regardless, he did something with the Brit of Noah. And that punishment is Aru Kenan. So the punishment of Kenan came, something having to do with the Brit. I think maybe we could say that why is Avraham Avinu telling Eliezer, he's saying, Iskan Beto, you're an amazing, you've been in my home for years. You're a tzaddik. I'm Moshel Bechol Hashem Lo. You literally have all my bank accounts. So exactly, that's a reason to say, Fadal, here is the Shiduch. But what's the next word in the Pasuk? Please put your hand underneath my Brit. Why? He was hinting to him, you know what happened, my friend? Many, many years ago, one of your great-great-grandfathers, he did a problem with the Brit of Loach. Cham. And Kenan is his son. And he came and he did a terrible mistake with the Brit. So he tells him, put your hand tachet yechi. Put it there and understand what the mistake was. Look at what caused you to lose this. Rabotai, my rabbi always said this. This is this Hidush. Think about this. Avam is looking for a Shiduch. For who? For Yitzhak Avinu. This Shiduch is going to be one of the matriarchs. In place of Rivka, potentially. So, what happens? He tells them, listen. Oh, I'm sorry, you're Arur and I'm Baruch. Arur and Baruch don't match. Late next. Pass off the Shiduch. He acts off his, re- he acts off his resume. If that, if the reason Chazal teaches us, our sages say, that he was ex off is because of what? Because he's, he's cursed. That means that potentially, because of the Midot, Tzenniyut, everything is in place. There's just one problem. What your great-great-grandfather did left a big stain. But you're fitting. Your, your resume is, reads perfect. There's just one bad X on the resume. And that is that he is Aru. He is cursed. Not because of what, where his daughter is. That means she's a tzaddeket. Look at how much a person's actions could damage down the road. Look how crazy that is. He's literally losing the zechut, the eternal zechut of being al okay, I'm okay, it's haq. And in the sense, we don't say okay, if ka, right? We're not reformed. But, <laughs> but we still obviously have the big zechut of the imahot akdashat. Very good. So, the, I, I'm saying this because I once went to Bet Knesset and unfortunately it was in a reform synagogue, there was a wedding there. And I saw it, I said, okay, I'm okay, it's okay, okay, cool. And okay, Sarah, Rivka, Rachel, Okay, we don't do that. But well, obviously our matriarchs were not feminine. Yeah, the lady rabbi did that. Why is, it, why is it so bad? It's saying that God owes it. It's great, but you can't add that to the text of Chazal. They can't add it. Yeah. So, Rabotai, just to conclude one message here, we're going to continue, whoever wants to join us. We'll end the, the psukim. We're going to continue in Chokhtay Yisrael. But the beautiful message we take from here is that as great as Eliezer was, Abamin who trusted him, loved him and everything, but look at what one stain of someone hundreds of years back could do to a person's grandkids. And the same is for us. You're, you have to look. Chacham, Shlomo Amir says, Hey, Chacham, Enav Berosho. 
A wise person, his eyes are in his head. What does that mean? Everyone's eyes are in their head, I, I hope. Very good. Yeah, his vision is to see things in the long distance. He doesn't just live the moment. He's not just living the next second. A fool, a fool walks in the darkness. He doesn't look in the long term. He looks at the next second. How can I enjoy right now? What's going to give me pleasure right now? So we should be so to always look and have a vision and look at the long term and understand what our purpose in life is and then only make the right decisions in it.